Good. Choose a color deck. Yes. What did you do? I'm working. Working. <laughs> Eating a lot of rice cake. No. Resting. All right. So then let's uh, <coughs> talk about the U.S. Uh, current pass. We'll do some introduction and then some light and taste. So in 2006, the current account deficit in the US was $788 billion. That's about 6% of the GDP. Alan Greenspan, the head of the central bank in the USA, said that this is not a problem, and this imbalance will gradually get smaller. Benign resolution means solution to the problem, and benign means just calm. However, the World Bank says that large deficits raise the risk of a sharp and disorderly fall of the dollar, so the dollar could get weaker very quickly and that this could be painful <coughs> to the world economy. So the US has a high current account deficit, and we have different opinions about that problem. So we talked about the net international investment position. For short, that's NIIP. Do you understand the word net in English? Gross is just, gross and net are different. So we have gross salary, for example, and net salary. So gross salary, net salary minus tax, okay, minus pension. So gross salary minus these things is net salary. So when we're talking about net, we mean we're talking about something minus something else. Okay, so in this case, the net international pos investment position is investments minus investments, okay? So, which investments, okay? So, foreign holdings of US assets and US holdings of foreign assets. Is that confusing? Hmm? It just means foreigners who buy things in the US, like stocks and bonds, right? Investments by foreigners in the US. Okay, investments by US people abroad. What's the difference? Which did we say was bigger? Yes. Hmm? Which is bigger? No. Yes, investments by foreigners in the US. That's what's paying for the US current account deficit, right? People are investing a lot of money in U.S. stocks and bonds. This allows the U.S. people to buy a lot of goods and have a large current account deficit. They buy a lot of imports. So we had, this was a slight improvement, so the gap got lower. Uh, if the dollar devalues, then this is going to improve. Why? So if the dollar gets weaker, So the dollar is getting weaker. Okay. Who's happier? The foreigners who invest in the US or the US people who invest abroad? If the dollar is getting weaker. Who is happier? If I'm a foreigner and I invest in US bonds, do I want the US dollar to get weaker? Yes or no? No, I don't. So who's happier? U.S. people who invest abroad. If I buy stocks in Europe and the U.S. dollar gets weaker, then I change my money back to dollars. Will I get more dollars or less dollars? So who's happier? Yes. U.S. people, right? U.S. people are happier. Uh, they're investing abroad and the dollar gets weaker. They get the advantage. So this gap gets smaller in that case. If the dollar gets weaker, 
these investments are more valuable, these investments are less valuable. So the net international investment position gap gets smaller. So just to explain about that position. So do you know Warren Buffet? Yeah. Who is he? A very good investor. He's a good investor, right? Uh, he said that current account imbalances could lead to chaotic markets in which currency adjustments play a part. What does he mean here, chaotic? It's some chaos. 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 What does chaos mean? It's some confused and uncertainty. Confused or panicked markets, right? And currency adjustment. What's a, another word for adjustment? Hmm? Changing. So the changing of the currency value could happen. So he, because of this risk of a weak, weaker US dollar, he planned to increase his investment in overseas companies to protect against this risk. So he was agreeing a little bit with, at least listening a little bit to the World Bank, right? Saying that I will, to lower my risk on the US dollar, I'll invest more overseas. Or overseas companies that do business overseas. So that's the introduction. Okay, we also saw the last time. So the, what do we want to learn in this case? So this case usually is taught to the MBA student in Harvard University, right? But we can also study the case in the undergraduate student, slightly different way, right? If you study the case in the master's degree, they expect you to read all of the case before you come to the class. And then during the class, you're going to just discuss about the case, right? But in the undergraduate degree, we're using the case to study about international macroeconomics. So by reading and studying the case together in the class, we can learn about the ideas of macroeconomics, international macroeconomics like the current account, Invest, invest, investment positions, right? Exchange rates, those kind of things. So that's why you guys were reading some part of the case. You can learn about the vocabulary and the ideas. So we are going to study what caused the U.S. current account deficit, and what are the effect, what would the effects be if it changed? If the U.S. stopped having a current account deficit, what would happen in the world? Uh, what would happen? What's the impact of domestic savings and investment in the US relative to world savings and investment? So, we're learning about savings and investment. We're also learning about trade and capital flow. Capital flow means money, capital is money. Flow means moving. So, we learn about international growth and productivity, interest rates, exchange rates. These kind of macroeconomic things, we want to learn about them using the case of the US. So the questions we are going to focus on, why has the United States such a large current account deficit? Okay. So when we are studying the case, we already studied about case analysis. If we find some information that is not relevant to these questions, we don't have to worry about it. Okay. So you can, if you need, you can write down this question because we're going to focus on these questions. First, why did the US get a current account deficit? Okay? Why does it have a current account deficit? Second, should the US do anything to make it smaller? Okay? First of all, is it okay? Just we leave forever, the US has a current account deficit, is that okay? If that's not okay, then what should they do to make it smaller? Okay. Uh, if there's a global adjustment, what, how could that happen? And what could we do to encourage a smooth adjustment? So similar to the second part, what can the rest of the world do to make this imbalance a little bit less? Okay. So why does the U.S. have imbalance? Imbalance is a key word in this. In this case, why, why does it have an imbalance? Is the imbalance okay? If it's not okay, what should the US do? What should the rest of the world do to make this imbalance less? Do you understand the word imbalance? Yes. 
What's another word to say in balance in English? <coughs> Not balanced? <laughs> Not even? <coughs> so let's uh, first of all just look at the current account of the US in a little bit more detail. We'll also look at the exhibits. So we said in 2006 they had a 788 billion current account deficit. So their imports were higher than their exports by 788 billion. So persistently high current account deficits were unheard of in large industrial countries. So sometimes 